A link to the Honda installation instructions can be found in the description of this video. It's highly advised that you follow these instructions carefully. Place your motorcycle on its center stand. Now before we install the trunk subharness, we must first remove all of these items from the Goldwing. We're going to give you an abbreviated look at how to do all of these steps within this video. However, if you want more detail and step-by-step -step instructions on each of these functions, check out our 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos using the link in the description. Remove the side panels on the left and right hand side of the motorcycle. With the side panels removed, you can now remove the seat and set it off to the side. Use a 12 mm socket to remove the two bolts that hold on each of the passenger grab rails. Make sure when you remove the bolts that you're holding the grab rail so that it doesn't fall and hit your saddlebag. Inside the trunk, remove the two Phillips screws that hold the front trunk lower panel in place and remove this panel. Now we're ready to remove the passenger backrest. On the inside of the trunk lid, you'll see six screws, three on each side, that hold the passenger backrest in place. We need to remove all six of these screws. Now you'll notice that the two screws at the top of this picture are longer than the other screws. Make a note of this because you want to make sure you put the correct length screw in the proper location. There's also a single screw on each passenger armrest as shown here. We need to remove both of these from the left and right side. With the screws removed, the passenger backrest will come loose, but there is an electrical connector that must be released before we can remove the backrest. Press this tab here to release the connector. Locate the three body clips on the right side of the trunk floor and remove these by pressing down in the center of the clip and then pulling up with your fingernail. You'll notice the one toward the front is longer than the other two. Now remove the three Phillips screws on the right hand side of the inner trunk liner. You'll find two more Phillips screws underneath the trunk hinge area as shown. These both need to be removed. Now you'll notice these are longer screws, so make a note of that. Make sure you put the longer screws back in the correct place on reassembly. Now you should be able to carefully remove the right hand side trunk panel. You'll have to work it around that hinge and just carefully remove it as shown. On the left side trunk hinge, you'll notice a wire harness is connected with a clip. We need to remove that and also remove this clip so that the harness can be pulled free from the trunk lid. There are six 5 mm socket bolts that hold the trunk lid to the hinge. These must all be removed. Using a 5 mm Allen wrench, remove these bolts. It's a good idea to leave one bolt on the first side that you remove to hold the trunk lid in place if you're doing this by yourself so that you can hold on to the trunk lid as you remove the last two bolts. To protect the painted surface of your trunk lid, use a soft surface like a towel like I'm using here. I also have a small piece of 2x4 wrapped with a microfiber cloth so that you can keep these little tabs off of the surface. You don't want these to break off. The inner trunk liner is held in place with these seven Phillips screws as well as four screws that hold the trunk striker rods in place. All of these must be removed before we can remove the inner liner. Go ahead and remove all of these screws. Take note when you remove the striker rods, the angle at which the striker rods must be placed when they are reinstalled. 
the inner liner can be removed by starting to release the tabs from the front of the trunk and move your way toward the rear of the trunk liner. Using isopropyl alcohol on a rag, clean the areas as shown before we attach the tape to those areas. The trunk sub-harness kit comes with two foam strips, adhesive strips like the ones shown here. You need to cut these in half and then peel the backing off and attach the first one to the trunk sub-harness as shown here. And of course you can refer to the instructions for the positioning of the harness on the inner liner. Make a 90 degree bend in the harness as shown and then use another one of the adhesive strips to hold the harness in place. Now you could also use gaffer tape instead of these foam strips. In fact, I'm going to show you on my last piece right here, I'm actually going to use a piece of gaffer tape uh, to hold that in place. And you can get this just about any audio video place sells gaffer tape. To reinstall the inner liner, start at an angle and start toward the back. You want to make sure you get those back uh, little bosses that go through the screw holes in place. Make sure those little bosses are flush with the screw holes as shown here, and then you know you have it snapped into place correctly. Reinstall the striker rods with the angle facing toward the back of the trunk and then reinstall the screws that hold the striker rods in place. Once you have the striker rods reinstalled, you can reinstall the seven screws that hold the inner trunk liner in place. Next, reinstall the trunk lid back on the hinges. I've sped up this part of the video because it's basically just reattaching those six 5mm socket bolts that hold the trunk lid to the hinge. On the right hand side trunk hinge you'll see a location to place that clip that holds the trunk harness in place and lower down on the harness you'll find a second clip and that will go into the opening on the lower portion of the trunk hinge. Using some isopropyl alcohol, we're going to clean an area on the right side speaker enclosure. And then we're going to begin routing our sub-harness around that speaker. And in between the lower edge of the speaker and the saddlebag, there's just enough room to kind of squeeze that harness underneath there, as I'm doing here, so that it will then go kind of under the seat, you might say, right next to the frame. You can use another piece of that foam adhesive or gaffer tape to hold that harness to that speaker enclosure as shown. Locate a rubber boot in between the right saddlebag and the frame as shown here. You'll see that rubber boot and pull up on it. If you look down inside there, you'll eventually find this connector. And you want to remove the dummy plug by lifting up on this little tab with your finger and it will just pull off that little cover or dummy connector. And then we can connect our trunk sub harness to that connector. Now you want to make sure you go ahead and put that connector back in that rubber boot and you can shove all of the excess wire from the harness down in between the saddlebag and the frame as shown. This completes the installation of the trunk sub harness. Of course, you'll have to reinstall your passenger backrest, your trunk side panels, passenger grab rails, and the seat and the side covers. For more detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to do all of these and much, much more, check out our 2018 Plus Honda Goldwing maintenance videos using the link in the description or the one shown on the screen.